Hello gorgeous people and welcome to Sparkle Tart. Today I'm going to use some awesome supplies from Jane Davenport to create a layered art journal page. Now this is going to be quite subtle with the layering and it's going to turn out gorgeous. Start by painting the page with a layer of gesso. Now make this nice and thick because the next step is to close those pages together while the gesso is wet and then pull them apart. Create some awesome texture. Now in the middle where I know that I'm going to add my images, I'm just flattening that texture out a little so that I've got a smooth surface to add my rub-ons onto. Now the next step is a kindergarten technique. Add little squirts of paint over the pages. I'm using three different colours, two Jane Davenport and one Dina Wakely turquoise and then squish the pages together and sort of rub with your fingers to move that paint about. Now, because I don't want to create a butterfly because I'm not a preschooler, although they are pretty cool, I'm going to spritz this with water to move the paint around a little and then use my water brush to spread some of those colours. Now, keep adding colour and moving it around with the water brush and squishing the pages together until you get a background that you like. Now, I'm making sure I only add it towards the middle of the page, that centre bit, centre third, so that my finished page will have some white space to it. It just makes it look a little bit less crazy. I love crazy pages, but for this one, I wanted to try something different. So spread the paint around and then grab some stamps. Now, I've got foam stamps, and while the paint is wet, I'm using these to ink up the stamp, so just stamping the stamp into the wet paint and then stamping over the background with it just to muddy up those colors a little so it doesn't look quite so blotchy and to add a little bit of extra pattern to my gorgeous page and this is so the way to do it. Now once all of that beautiful paint is dry grab the gesso again and we're just going to mute some of that color. Now, as you can see, I'm using my very best technical tools here, my finger, just to spread the gesso out on a little um, acrylic mat. And I'm just gonna grab a stamp and stamp into that and add some sort of stamped patterns onto my page. And then put some of that leftover gesso onto an old credit card and scrape some of that across the color. And what that does is it adds another layer of pattern and visual texture and then it knocks back some of those colors. Now, if you'd like your page to be super bright, you can ignore the scraping bit across the top and just leave it with the stamped gesso for a wonderful bright page. But I know what I'm putting on here next. So it needs to be just knocked down a little bit so that when I add my beautiful Jane journal tattoos, they stand out against the background. Um, and that scraped on white gesso will definitely help them do that because it will make their colors a little bit brighter. Now I'm also going to use the edge of the credit card to add a few little straight lines and patterns in here just for a bit of added interest. So everything you do should be adding to the interest, adding to the layers so that your finished piece has lots of stuff going on and is interesting to look at. Now it's time to add some rub-ons, which Jane calls journal tattoos. I've cut the little pieces out from the sheets that I think I'd like to use, and I'm just rubbing these on quite firmly um, so that they make good contact with the page. Now, they tend to like acrylic paint and gesso, so this actually works pretty well. And I've noticed that Jane's rub-ons adhere really beautifully, so there's no trouble with them sort of breaking up into pieces and coming apart. Make sure you peel these back carefully so that you don't sort of rip or tear them. And you can see how fantastic that looks with that scraped gesso underneath. And that's why I did it, so that they stand out a little bit more. Add as many little rub-ons as you'd like. And then you are ready for the next step, which is adding the fabulous single face stamp from Jane Davenport. Now I'm using archival ink to add this because I know that it will be I know that it will be waterproof, so anything I add over the top won't muck up the image underneath, which is a bit of an issue sometimes. So using a stamp positioner, um, and this one is just from Fiskars, apply the inked stamp to your page. And this gives you sort of an outline and a very faint face to work with. Now I've made sure mine is completely set by drying it with a heat gun before the next step which is adding hair with the fantastic mermaid markers. Now, these are great if you are 
unsure of being able to do things, especially when working over gesso, because using a water brush, you can fade this out to nothing or leave really strong lines. So it is really great because drawing the face around the eyes, the nose and the mouth on that stamp was the most challenging part of this whole page. And the mermaid markers really allowed me to play with the shape of the face. And when you combine it with the acrylic paint, it meant that I could have a play, see if the cheekbone was in the right spot, and if not, sort of wash it out just to a very gentle purple and then make the shape of the face a little bit different. So between the acrylic paint and the mermaid markers, that let me really have a couple of goes at the face shape so I could get it right. Now, I love layering my paints and markers so that you get a really beautiful and interesting result. Um, it's quite subtle. The way I do it is quite subtle. You could make it as dark as you like, but start by adding acrylic paint, but instead of using a normal paintbrush, apply it with a water brush. That means you can make it as thick or as thin and opaque or as transparent as you like so that you can get some of the colour and some of the pattern that we've added to the journal page behind that face peeking through. Now, as you can see, I'm adjusting the shape of the cheek here and it is so super easy. Um, just using the acrylic paint going over the mermaid marker. And it means that you can just sort of keep playing with that shape of the face until you're happy with it. Now, I've made my face quite long um, on purpose, just for something a bit different. I'm now adding some white highlights with gesso and if you add this while the acrylic paint is still wet underneath, you can get some beautiful blended results, which is what I love. So it's quite subtle, but it means that you can get sort of tints and tones on the face without fussing around with mixing paint on the side in a palette. So just use the gesso and blend it right into the paint you've already got on your face to create a beautiful base layer. And I find this so much fun to use. And it's just really easy to do. So as a newbie, this is much simpler than trying to muck around with different colors for the face and trying to blend those. It just works really well. Now I'm using a tiny little bit of the mermaid marker here on my water brush, just to add a hint of pink to the lips and cheeks before I continue on. Now, some of these things it's great to do while wet if you want them to blend like this. So adding the pink mermaid marker while the paint underneath is still a little wet means that that pink color will blend with the colors underneath and it will be really subtle and I won't end up with sort of weird marks or anything strange like that. If you'd like to layer the colors, it's best to wait for each layer to dry between. But for this one, I'm just adding a tint to the color and this has worked beautifully. Now that that base layer of color is dry and you can see how subtle that is, it's time to amp up the drama. Now I'm going to use a Dina Wakely food ball pen to do this. And while it's not completely permanent uh, over acrylic paint, it is pretty good at not moving. So as long as you don't add too much water and go too hard over the top of it, this will be great. Now you can see it is going really well over all of that paint. No problems with the pen clogging or anything like that. Gosh, I wish this came in white. Um, and I'm really adding a bit of extra oomph to the eyes and the eyebrows. And this is where you can make the face a little bit more your own. So you can choose to trace directly over the stamped image, or you can choose to make it a little bit different and tweak it here and there, which is what I'm doing. So you can see I've refined the face shape. I'm giving the eyebrows a bit more drama. I'm adding a bit of black to the hair just so that it pops from the page. Now, of course, this is not the final layer. Um, there's a lot more work yet to do, but this helps start the outline of the beautiful face that we are creating here. Now, wait for that to dry. Dry it with a heat gun if you like. Me, I'm impatient, so I'm going right over the top with my mermaid marker and adding a bit more drama to the hair while I'm adding drama to the face. Basically, all you need to do to do this is using the same mermaid marker we used to begin with go over, but don't blend it out with the water brush. So it's really beautiful and dark. Now the other thing you can do is add some of it and leave it dark, blend a little with the water brush, but not all. These mermaid markers over acrylic paint allow you to get the most beautiful shades to the color and make it as strong or as subtle as you like. And I love that, it gives me so many options and I do like my options. Now I'm using that same mermaid marker, I'm just grabbing a bit off the hair 
to add a few basic shadows to the face and the eyes. It just means it's all coordinated and it's really simple. I've grabbed my Jane Davenport paint over pens and I'm just using these to add a bit more color. Now I'm going to use these the same way that I use the acrylic paint. So I add the paint over pen and then blend it out using my water brush. Now this means you get brilliant control and especially as a new artist or someone new to the products, it means you don't have to worry about lines and mistakes because you can just blend that right out and make it as subtle as you like or as strong as you like. It gives you a little bit more control and that way you can sort of try things and if it doesn't work, grab that water brush really fast and wipe it off. It just means that you can be a little bit more confident with how you're working with the colors and the paints because nothing is permanent straight away. It means you've got time to play with it and adjust it and make sure it's what you wanted to achieve and that the effect is what you were after. Now, you can paint straight from the paint pen onto the image. You can use the water brush and take a bit of color from the tip. Again, really versatile and I love versatile products. So this is working really well for me. So I've swapped to the sort of peachy color for a bit more skin tone look here, and I'm using it to add sort of some structure to the face. So add a little bit of shadow or lightness, um, go over some of the nose. Now everything I'm doing here is going to be really subtle. I will try a more dramatic face in the future. I keep promising myself that. But for the moment, I want layers, layers, and more layers. Now, while that paint is still wet, or at least some of it, I'm grabbing a white Sharpie marker and the white paint over pen and adding some highlights. Now the paint over pen is great for subtle highlights because it's kind of transparent, whereas the Sharpie marker being a lot more opaque is great for really bold highlights. So the little sparkle in the eyes or the little shine on the lips, that kind of thing. But being such a fine point on this one, it allows me to add really fine detail and then again, blend it out with the water brush. Or if you'd like a less I don't know, watery look. <laughs> sometimes I blend it out with my finger. Now, the only problem with that is that sometimes you can't really see quite what's happening under your finger. So sometimes you then need to touch up some of the black bits afterwards. But again, it'll give you a different sort of more matte look than using the water brush. Either way, that white Sharpie marker is fantastic for adding highlights to the face and giving it a little bit more detail. Now, make sure that you make the whites of the eyes nice and bright so that the color of the eye stands out against it and so that the eyes really draw the attention. Now, I love this Sharpie marker. It's one of my favorite things over pretty much anything. Um, and I've just finished, I think, my second Sharpie marker this year. So it gets a lot of use. Now, leave all of those layers to dry. And once they've dried, I'm adding a little bit of stenciled patterns just with Punchinella and the same paint over markers, I'm trying to give some connection to my face and the background. So I'm making sure I've got a little bit of this um, spotty imagery because I've got some of that in the background already from those beautiful journal tattoos. So I'm bringing some of these spots a bit further over the background and a bit through the hair. That way it sort of helps make the images look a bit more connected. And I realize this is sort of an odd step but believe me, it really helps make it look like one page rather than one thing plonked on top of another, which can be really important to the finished product. Now, once you've got those little stencily bits dry, just add some doodling if you'd like with a Sharpie marker. So for me, I'm just going around some of those little circles just to make them look a bit more like what the journal tattoos look like. And they've got some little rings around the edges. Um, so I'm doing mine in the reverse. So the little journal tattoos that I've got are light in the middle and dark on the outside. All of my stencils will be dark in the middle and light on the outside, just so that it's got a bit of a connection. It's just kind of something fun to do. Now that the base layers are done, it's time to really start adding those extra layers that finish the page. And for me, I'm going to use a bit more of the paint over pen to just enhance the eyes um, and take that black ring away because I decided I didn't like it. And then using the mermaid markers, I'm going to add layer after layer after layer until my face looks like I'd like it to. So it's got some shadows and some lightness and some fun in there. 
Now, the technique I'm using with the mermaid markers is twofold. So I've got my water brush, but I also have a piece of paper towel at the side. And I'm going to be using those mermaid markers to stain the dry acrylic paint. Now, to do that, you add the mermaid marker over the top, and then you can blot with a paper towel. Now, depending on how long the mermaid marker has been sitting on top of the paint, will give you the depth of colour. So if it's only on there a short time, you'll get a very light staining on the acrylic paint. If you leave it there for a long time, you'll get a darker stain and hence a darker colour. So I'm going to be doing that. I'm also going to be spreading some of my colour with a paintbrush just so that I don't get any harsh edges. Um, and it gives the most beautiful, subtle look to your result. And I just love that subtle layered so that when you're looking at it, you can see all these beautiful colours when you get up close. But when you're looking at it from a distance, you just see a really pretty face. So I just, I love kind of like those little hidden bits that you can see in artworks. It's just cool. So those layers work for me. Um, also, as a beginning artist, it means you've got more control and can build up the colour to the depth you want rather than putting something on the page and being stuck with this hideous dark colour that you can't get away from. So I find that being able to build up the layers gives me much more confidence to try different colours than I might have before, to be a bit bolder with my brush strokes, to lay something down and then see how it looks. And because you can blot with the paper towel because you're working over acrylic or knock that colour back with the water brush or blend it out, it means you can practically do no wrong. So it's a really great way if you're learning to play with building up colours and get a bit of confidence without having ruined your image just by adding one colour that turned out to be too dark. Now you can see what I'm doing here is going back over the same areas with the same colour. And what that does is it builds up the colour layer by layer. Just look at that nose in particular. It gets that real um, sort of you know, layered look to the colours mm -hmm. and that real graded look. Um, that makes it look so much more interesting and so much more defined. Now, I still don't want this to be a really punchy piece because it's sort of all soft and subtle and flowy, so I'd like to keep the colours that way as well. But this just lets me build those up with a bit of confidence. So using a bit of pink on the lips, adding that same pink in other areas, and also using a few of my beautiful Jane Spark... Mm -hmm. Sparkly mermaid colours, because I love my sparkle. <clears throat> now, the only warning I can give you about the mermaid markers is occasionally when opening the cap, sometimes they can splatter. So try not to open the cap over your artwork unless you don't mind the little spotty looks. Now, for me, sometimes I like that. On this instance, not so much. So open it over the side and try not to splatter from the cap. Now at this point, it's time to start refining the eyes a little. So I'm using the mermaid marker to color over some of that white that I've added around the bottom, but I'm going to blot it off with a paper towel so it's stained the white paint and given a beautiful light blue that still works just in with other colors on my page. Now you'll notice I've been sort of sticking to the same color palette, the purples, the blues, the pinks, that I used in the initial colours for the background. And I've even been using these colours in mermaid markers for my face shadows. It just sort of helps keep it all together and just sort of a bit more one piece of artwork. Now it's time to add some shadows to my face. So up until now, I've been sort of building up the layers of colour. Now I'm going to start defining the contours of my face. Now again, this will be really subtle because that's sort of how I want my face to look, a bit cartoony and sort of bold, but not particularly realistic. So I'm just using some of those gorgeous mermaid markers and the paint over pens to knock back color in some areas, like on the cheeks and the eyelids, and then add some bolder shadows to areas. Now I'm using the same techniques as I have for the rest of the face. So adding it on, spreading it with the water brush. Now I'm basically using that same beautiful peachy tone that I've used for the skin, uh, I believe it's called coral, um, just to add some darker areas and I create that darker colour by layering one over the other time after time, letting it dry between each. Now I'm swapping to jellyfish which is a beautiful sort of mauvey colour and it's great for adding shadows and it works really well with that peachy coral tone. 
And again, just the same techniques I've been using. So spreading with the water brush and blotting with some paper towel. Goes beautifully, works consistently, and it's really difficult to mess it up. So keep adding those layers until you've built up a little bit more oomph to the face and let that dry. Now, one of the final steps is shaping the eyes and adding a bit more shape to the hair. So I'm using my Sharpie marker. You know I love it by now. And then I'll use the same mermaid marker to add a bit more shape to the hair because at the moment it's a bit blah. So I'm going to make something that looks a little bit like a loose plait and just spread some of that color with the water brush. And I think part of what's bothering me with the hair is it's too perfect. And my hair's never like that. I don't know about yours. Mine's always got a few strands out of place or a little bit of mess here and there. So I'm going to mess up the hair. It doesn't really need too much because it's providing a really good um, sort of visual definition between the background and the face there. But I'm just going to enhance it a little. Now, once I'm waiting, while I'm waiting for the hair to dry, I'm just going to add another layer with my mermaid markers to enhance those shadows a little bit more. Be a bit bolder with this layer because you've already got some color underneath. So you can kind of afford to be a little bit um, more adventurous with your color and leave it a bit darker. It will dry lighter once it's dried. So leave the colors a bit darker and see how you go. Now, once you've got that extra layer of shadow, it's time to enhance with some Prismacolor pencils. Now, I do have Jane's beautiful um, pencils somewhere in my room, but I started tidying up and I haven't seen them since. So I know they're somewhere, but for the moment, Prismacolors will work just great because they're nice and waxy and they glide right over the acrylic paint. So just add a few little bits of hints of a plait to the hair, add a few outlines and a few little wavy bits. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is use some of the same color pencils as I've been using with paint, so sort of turquoises and teals, and go around the hair. It just helps provide an extra bit of, I suppose, a line, a definition between the face and the background. But by using the same colors, it's not sort of in your face. Now, I'm also using white to blend that out on the edges. You could also use a blender pencil, but I like the white because it sort of knocks back the color and blends it in together. That's just something I like to do. Now I'm going to use the same kind of pencils, the Prismacolors, just to add a little bit more pattern into the eyes, just to make them look a bit more luscious. And then I'm going to grab one color of pencil, which is Indothrone Blue. And I'm going to use that just to enhance my shadows, both on the hair and on the face. So it's kind of all got the same kind of look. It just helps, again, another little trick to try and bring things together a bit. So make sure that it's not super sharp, but sharp enough so that you get nice detailed lines and just press very lightly and add some shadows around the eyes, the eyebrows, the outside edge of the face and anywhere else you might like to have a little bit extra color. I'm also using it just to add a tiny bit of definition to the nose and the lips and just around that little lip dip as well, just to darken that shadow without being too bold. And I love the fact that the color is the same color that shows up on the other side of the page in the little girl's dress. It just sort of keeps everything looking quite matchy-matchy, kind of pretty. Now, we are almost at the end here. I'm going to use my Sharpie marker just to clean up any little bits of messy stuff and to add the final highlights to the eyes and the face. And then I'm going to go back in with my food ball pen and any little areas that have been covered by some of the acrylic paint or um, the water brush, uh, sorry, the mermaid markers. And then we are going to add the finishing touch to the page because now it is beautifully defined, really pops See, there's that messy hair I was talking about. Got to have a little bit of mess so that it looks less perfect. I always like things that look less perfect. But that final step I was talking about, a little bit of gold fine liner. And this is the gold paint that I've used a few times now this year. And I'm loving it. Now, this fine liner actually has two tips. I only just found that out. One that's really, really fine, which is what I'm using now, and one that is a little bit fatter for fatter lines. 
Now I'm just adding a little bit of this through the hair so it looks like little gold threads through there. Just adds a hint of metallic to the page and just makes it pop. Now because I was just feeling like it, and sometimes I do things because I'm just feeling like it, I've added a few little gold touches into some of the design in the background and a few tiny little spots of gold just around the corner of her eye. Just because I felt like it. I don't know why. I just wanted to do that. And and this is it. This is the finished page. So let me grab this. And you can see that beautiful gold just sort of threaded through the hair, giving just a hint of metallic sparkle. You've got that gorgeous scraped background that's sort of peeking through on one at it. You've got this beautiful, subtle, well, <laughs> dramatically subtle face <laughs> if there is such a thing so all of those colors building up building up building up so that you've got shadows that sort of melt into the background enhanced with that little bit of pencil and I love those pouty pink lips that was just the perfect color to match in with the rest of this and it matches in with some of my background so when you tilt it you've got the hints of metallic in the hair you've got that subtle creamy color and I hope you've enjoyed it because I sure had a ball making this so thank you so much, everybody, for watching. I hope you've loved my face using Jane Supplies and the page. And subscribe if you would like to see more of this. And to all my current subscribers, thank you so, so much. And I will see you soon back here on Sparkle Tart. Bye.